What's going on YouTube? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk. Today is Saturday, September 8th, 2018. We had another great trading week last week. First week of the month, we had some jobs data out of the US and Canada on Friday. A lot of fundamental news stacking last week. We have another stacked week coming up ahead this week. We've got the pound, Aussie, US dollar, um, all three of them pretty heavily weighted. We have the pound having GDP average earnings as well as the central bank rate statement. And we have Australian jobs report and US inflation numbers, CPI, PPI, and retail sales. So another very good fundamental week coming up. The summer slow months are over, so we got some good trading ahead. And I'm really looking forward to some of these setups we got. Anybody new to these videos, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts here in a minute. I'm going to go over all the Forex trading pairs that I would analyze, the US dollar and all the major crosses, as well as all the cross currency pairs. I'm going to go into a little bit of the S&P 500 gold and oil. Um, and just do an overall breakdown of the markets and the analysis that I have from last week as well as this week moving forward. Some trades we took, some trades we're looking to take, and what is really just on the watch list for this week ahead. It's an all-in-one spot to get your technical analysis breakdown of the charts and the pairs and what we'll be watching for the week coming. So um, all my returning viewers, thank you guys. I love you all. I appreciate the support. Can't thank you enough for coming back. I hope you guys are getting content and value out of this. Um, it takes a lot of time to make these videos, so I really hope you guys do enjoy them. But, uh, but no further ado, I'll go ahead and jump into the charts here and let you guys see what I got going on, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, thank you guys. See you in there. All right, so diving into the charts here, we're going to start with the Dixie, the U.S. dollar index. This is the dollar pinned up against a basket of the other currencies, basically showing the overall relative performance of the U.S. dollar. Um, as you guys can see here this week, we had a pretty um, uneventful U.S. dollar. You know, we didn't see too much movement other than just sideways chopping. Uh, we had what we thought was going to be price breaking up above 95.50, above this resistance, and then price reversed, came down to 95 support, thought maybe we could sell off and continue lower off of that, off this bearish engulfing bounce off this resistance. But then price just bounced with a bullish engulfing here on Friday off of the jobs reports out of the U.S. So um, nothing really changed in our view from the dollar from last week. Still watching for breaks of these technical levels. Still want to see if this 95 support holds or 95.50 resistance. Got a little bit of a you know counter pullback trend line here in black that you guys can see that we're watching for a break of as well. But um, all in all, we have a... Um, pretty uneventful week in the dollar last week, so not much has changed in our analysis. We're still just waiting. I would like to see either a break above this 95.50, showing us some bullishness coming into the dollar. That would be a great opportunity to start looking for longs. Or if we break below this counter trend line down here, break below 95 support, or roll below this 50 SMA and uh, roll over, that could potentially be a reversal here going on in the dollar. We could potentially see this selling off, and maybe we get some shorting opportunities over the next couple weeks. But all in all, the dollar is in a watch and wait type of mode looking to see what the next move is euro pretty similar um you know we were in this descending triangle pattern price broke out and immediately reversed with a, with a um, reversal out of that breakout right back into the range so we're still now back in this range we're, we're now trading down below this 10 110 50 support that price was uh we were watching for this break in the past so we are back down there um, the 20s below the 50 SMA price is trading below the 50 now. Um, we did have a big bullish push with a correction. So this could now bounce off the support again and push higher. So again, we want to wait and watch. If we throw a little Fibonacci out here, we can see um, off of this move, price came up, pivot high, pull back right around the 382 to 50 Fib level of this push. If this is a reversal, we could see this bounce off of this area, which lines up with this strong support, and maybe we push higher, and this euro sees some strength coming. All in all, though, again, similar to the dollar, we are in a an area of um, wait and see. Watch how it reacts. Watch what price does in these levels, and um, get our bias developed once we see price react. Right. Moving on from that, we have the yen. Um, the yen chopped around again this week. Past couple weeks been pretty choppy. We are still looking for potential break to the downside. We are still pinned up against this resistance at 86.50, this trend line moving downward. The uh, moving averages are just crisscrossing in here as well. Um, so we haven't really had much of a change with the yen either, but I'll be watching for this black support level, 85.50 to break, or if we can break above this 86.50, break above this trend line, above the moving averages, we might see a pop in the yen there. 
Um, a lot of the yen right now is depending on what's going on in the equity markets with our risk on risk off themes. And um, we'll touch on the SP 500 here briefly in a minute, but uh, that is what we like to watch for the yen with this risk on risk off. And um, fundamentally speaking, where the money is going, where investors are relocating funds or um, pulling funds and putting safer haven assets into stuff like the yen. But this is something we will be watching. And again, this is another pair that no clear set direction right now. We just want to wait for price to give us an idea of where it's going. And then we can react from there. Pound, a little bit of a different story. I am more bearish on the pound than I am anything. As you can see, this downtrend has continued. We set this lower low, pulled back. And the beginning of last week, we thought that this was ready to roll over. But we started to. And then kind of just chopped around in here under this 126 resistance. So um, the 50 SMA is closed in now. Price is up against it. We've got choppy three days here, but um, the bears ended up winning all three days. So we do have some bearishness here. We are on a nice area of resistance. We are in a nice area of a lower high being set. 50 SMA is pinning in. Could draw a trend line closing in on it here as well. So I am watching for a break to the downside of the pound to look to ride this pair lower. Canadian dollar, another nice technical chart I like here. We did break out of this channel. We broke out and have been chopping around here around this 75 level, but all in all, CAD looks ready to fall to me. 20 SMA is now curling lower about to cross the 50. Price is below the 50. All of it's below the 200 SMA, which is still sloping downward. So we do still have this uh, bearish trend going on. We were moving up in this trend channel that started as a bear flag, was starting to look like it could have been reversing to a trend reversal, but we did break out of that flag pattern this week. And we are now trading outside of this channel. So I will be looking for shorts on the Canadian dollar. And potentially this week, we could see that move happen to push us down to around this 74 support down here, as you can see with this red line. Um, that takes us on to the Swiss franc. Another one that I'm looking for, um, nice setups on. This did pretty much what we expected it to. Pulled back, retested, pushed higher. But um, it's, it's still chopping around this 200 SMA. So I will be watching to see what price does, but all in all, I am now long the Swiss franc. I do think this Swiss franc has reversed out of this trend nicely, and I do think that we can continue to see buying opportunities in the Swiss franc moving forward. Australian dollar um, continues to get crushed. It's just continuing to sell off more and more. We've been riding this downtrend, trying to catch these lower highs all every time that they've formed, and we've now broken and closed down here below this weekly level, as you can see on 72. So uh, last week we had, I mean, two weeks ago, we had a very strong bearish candle. And then this past week, we had another strong bearish candle, just continuing to plow through these technical levels. And we are now down below this 72 weekly support. So um, again, same game plan. What we're going to be doing is waiting for pullbacks, try to catch shorting opportunities at the best times. But um, all in all, I mean that the Australian dollar is definitely weak. And we want to continue to look for shorts, but we don't want to try to catch a falling knife. We don't want to, you know, short into it as it's just been getting crushed because that's just going to be, you know, chasing something that's oversold. So we want to wait for the right opportunities, wait for the right pairs to show us the right setups. Uh, we could get a strong bounce in the Aussie this week. We have a pretty parabolic move here. We're pretty extended from the moving averages. We uh, could come back up to retest this weekly level now, maybe chop around here. But all in all, we, we do need to remain bearish on the Aussie and just wait for the right opportunities to enter. New Zealand dollar has been playing very nicely as we had anticipated still. Um, as you can see here on this weekly chart, we had another bearish weekly break and close below support. We had another strong bearish week. Taking it over the daily chart, you can see a little better here. We had this strong move, pulled back a little, and continued to go lower. Friday, we did close with a break and strong close below this support. So shorts with New Zealand dollar remain on the table as well, um, looking at the overall index itself. But this is a very, very interesting pair. Um, we have some technical levels being reached with pairs pinned up again, so it looks like it could bounce, bullish bounce. But um, the technical charts are showing us bearishness for the New Zealand dollar. So we will be keeping an eye out for shorts, but again, the markets could open with a strong New Zealand dollar. We could see a rally all week, which would change our analysis pretty quickly in what we're looking for. So just be ready to adapt, ready to change, and ready to take whatever price action throws at us. Stepping into the S&P 500 real quick, you guys can see we're pulling back off all-time highs still. We're now approaching this black trend line that I've got drawn here. Um, and as you guys can see, you know we're, we're pulled back to structure now. You can see the last strong push. We're back down to where that that move originated. 
you know, it, it originated here, but then we had a little bit of a pullback and then it pushed again. So this push right here is where we're nearing. And um, we could see another bullish push this week. We, we did get a sell off this week in the equity markets, um, but nothing too crazy, nothing too strong. It was kind of just like, uh, you know, slowly trickling lower. Um, Thursday, it did push down significantly, at least somewhat, but all in all, S&P 500 is still in a very bullish technical setup. We do still want to look for longs on this if if you are trading this pair, if you use it for correlation like I do. We want to keep an eye on it on a day-to-day -day basis to see how we are trading in the aftermarket hours, how opening's going. Um, this little bit of that opening into the U.S. session when we get that boost of whether uh, markets are going to push or push or uh, push higher or push lower. Um, that initial opening of the market, that's another good time to trade in the U.S. open when we have these equity markets open up at 9.30 Eastern time. Um, so really just all in all, we want to use this pair for correlations, this, this chart, this index of the S&P 500, top 500 companies um, in the U.S. equity markets. We want to use this for our correlations with the FX markets. And if you trade it even better, you can uh, look for long opportunities on these pullbacks in here. But all in all, I'm definitely still long on the S&P 500. Gold, still short. We had this push for this lower low, pull back this lower high, and we've been chopping around here this week. But I do think this counter trend line is being broken. I do think this looks like it's ready to continue to the downside. So, um, you know, looking to short it anywhere is in here and ride it down to around this 111 area is what I would be looking for if you're trading gold. And, um, you know, shorts just still look great for this pair. Oil, a little bit mixed. We're uh, this $80, $68 a barrel support is holding. We had this do doji strong lower rejection wick candle close here on Friday. Uh, we did have a strong sell-off this week in oil as it rejected the $70 a barrel mark, started to push through it. We thought maybe the bulls were going to win and it was going to take into a bullish trend, but it actually ended up selling off really hard off of that high. Um, pushed all the way back below the $70 a barrel and even down to $69 a barrel and continued to sell off from there. So we want to keep an eye on this momentum, see what this pair is doing, um, see what oil is doing this week. And uh, just keep an eye on it. It's, again, like some of the other pairs we've been watching, it's pinned between support and resistance. So we want to see a break either way of this. We want to see, um, you know, price break below. I'd like to see it come break this trend line or if we can break this resistance at $70 a barrel and close above it and stay above it. That's what we'd be watching for as far as, um, you know, long opportunities in oil. So um, that takes us away from the indexes and the uh, major currencies. Over to the U.S. dollar crosses first, starting with the Euro U.S. dollar. As you guys can see here with this blue level, blue is how I highlight my weekly levels. As you guys can see, we are on a very strong weekly level with this Euro dollar. Um, this week, we had a decent um, long opportunity. We did take a long off of this trend line bounce, caught a few pips in here, and then the rest of the pair ended up getting, the rest of the trade ended up getting stopped at break even, but we did make some pips off of this pair this week long. Um, however, this Friday close is telling me a little bit of a different story now, right? So we had this strong break above here, pulled back a little. We caught this little bounce as we could have been changing trend, but now you can see Thursday, Friday, we rounded that out, reversed that down, and Friday especially with this very strong push to the downside break um, below these two daily opens and closes. So as you can see, we are still sitting on this support, so I wouldn't pull the trigger on any direction trade right now. Um, there's a couple different ways you could play it. Maybe if you're playing short, you wait for a break, pull back, try to short it off there. Maybe you're a, a support resistance trader and you know you want to get in on a long where it's at here and put stops below here, maybe target up here. Um, that could be an opportunity to play this, but all in all, I would wait for price to show us a little bit clearer direction. See if the support's going to hold and bounce. See if the support's broken, maybe wait for a retest or just put some sell stops below the support because that's how you trade. A uh, number of different ways you can be looking for setups here, but all in all, the way I trade, I'm not looking for setups immediately on this pair. I'm going to wait for price to develop a little more. Show me what's going on. Pound dollar, um, still remaining bearish. Rejected this 50 SMA trend line and resistance on Friday. So you can see it tried to push higher, tried to push up above this, rejected it, and ended up closing lower. The pound has been a pretty volatile pair. If you take it down to the lower time frames here, you can see there's just been some strong choppy price action in different directions. So not the cleanest or the best pair to be trading at the moment, but I am still certainly bearish this pair, and this Friday candle close helped confirm that pretty good for us. U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. As you guys can see here, 
We did have a nice strong bullish break up above and out of this pattern this week. We had a couple day pullback and then Friday a little bit of mixed. Uh, we had Canada, Canadian dollar and US dollar news on Friday. So a little bit of a indecisive whipsaw here going on Friday. So nothing too strong price action wise, but we did break up above this trend line, up above this support resistance zone, up above the 50 SMA, 20 SMA, 200 SMA. Price is looking like we're ready to push higher again here now. Um, as I told you guys, I am bearish the Canadian dollar. So if we get a strong US dollar and that bearishness in the Canadian dollar prevails this week, we could see some good long opportunities on the dollar CAD. Dollar yen, messy chart. I'm not looking to trade this pair and uh, still really just not showing us anything too great. But um, you can see price has just been chopping around in here. We did break out of this wedge, but price hasn't done anything really since then. So I don't have too much of a bias as to where the yen is going. We did have this strong bearish break and close below here on Thursday, which was below this range that we had been chopping around in between, but it quickly bounced back up. So um, really just want to wait for the yen to show us some direction, whether we break up above this resistance here, or maybe we break below this support and this trend line down here. Either way, we need some kind of, um, you know, more confirmation to direction before we can start looking to trade this. We don't want to just be shooting from the hip and blind fire, and we want to actually have our perfect setup. So this is just a pair that we are going to move on and wait for something to show us better. Dollar Swiss franc continues to sell off again this week. Um, we did hit this strong support again here at 96.50, so we want to wait and see. Instead of chasing and just trying to short this, we want to wait and see if we can get in a better price. Maybe price pulls back, taps this 200 SMA as it's coming lower, and we find an opportunity to short there. Uh, or maybe the pair just opens and closes and just takes off lower. Maybe we wait for a pullback to retest to short it there. Um, but we will be looking for shorts on this pair. Nothing immediately. Got to wait for price to develop a little bit, but we are definitely still bearish. Um, moving averages rolling over. Price is setting lower lows. Broke below the 200 SMA, 20s below the 50, both sloping sharply downward. So um, technically speaking, we have a nice bear market here now in the dollar Swiss franc. So we want to keep our eyes on this pair, especially if we have a weak dollar and strong Swiss franc this week. Aussie dollar, again, as I showed you guys with the Aussie index, just continuing to get crushed. Broken closed strong on Friday below this weekly support level, as you can see here with this 72, right? So we have... Um, Price in this downtrend, setting lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. What we are doing now is setting a lower low. So instead of chasing this, instead of trying to buy against this strong momentum and against the trend, instead of trying to short into the middle of strong sell-offs and oversold conditions, we want to be patient, sit back like a sniper, and wait. And what we wait for here is price to pull back. We want to come back up. Maybe we get a nice retest of this weekly level. Maybe we get price you know, maybe it sells off again Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday pulls back, and then maybe next week we have good shorting opportunities off here. Maybe it immediately pulls back. We get good shorting opportunities this week. Either way, we want to wait for price to come to us. We want to identify our areas that we want to be entering and then wait for price action to show us what we want to see and then enter. So what we'll be waiting for with this pair is price to pull back, get us some kind of a discounted wholesale um, lower high entry that we can do and um, try to short that pair at the best opportune time. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, this was a beautiful trade played out um, in the past couple weeks. We had this lower low price pullback rallied back up to prior structure um, on the 50 SMA, also on the um, 618 and 50 Fib level, as I have highlighted with this box, right on structure. We had a bearish engulfing on the daily candle chart. Um, price broke that counter trend line and was a great short opportunity. But um, now we are back down on this support here. We are breaking and closing below it, but again, like with the Aussie, this isn't in a position that we want to just be entering a trade right now. As you can see on the weekly chart, we do have room to the downside, right? So we do have room all the way down before we have anything too major. Um, you know, we do have some zones to worry about in here, you know, and then again down here. Um, but all in all right now, we are in a decent level if you take it to the daily maybe we can see this a little better you can see there is you know a lot of price action responding to this zone in the past support 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 resistance resistance support right again in here resistance resistance strong break support um so where we are right now is a decent daily level we could see a bounce here um 
another one where we got to wait for price to show us what's going on we don't want to just chase this pair one way or the other we want to wait and see what it does wait and see if we're going to continue lower or maybe we get a pullback to start this week and essentially we are bears and we want to remain looking for shorting opportunities on this pair and uh, we do that by sitting back taking our time being patient and letting price play out all right so that covers the u.s dollar crosses the major currency pairs i'm gonna go ahead now and hop into the cross pairs and what i am watching specifically for this week ahead starting with new zealand yen um this one isn't the most ideal setup um that i look for i just it's an interesting technical setup that i want to show you guys we got some divergence appearing here um not total yet it, it is still a little flat here but we can see the divergence on the rsi indicator here showing on a weekly support could be a double bottom forming here on this daily chart New Zealand yen is the second time trying to break this strong level. We could either wait for a break, pull back to short this, or you guys could look for a bounce off this strong support. Maybe catch it up for a, um, you know, a decent 100 pip move or 50 pip move off of this bottom here. Uh, nice risk to reward ratio if you trade setups like this. As you can see, you could put a stop. Let's say you entered here. You could put a stop down here below the lows, and that would be a nice clear short small stop loss. And then you can have your target be maybe the prior support um structure here and then you got a clear target nice risk to reward uh, decent setup there but that that's not my trend trading that's not my style of trading this is just a nice setup that i have technically that i'm liking that is on a strong um area so if you guys trade style similar to that maybe this will help you see something you didn't notice or something like that but um i do like that opportunity there with new zealand yen if that fits your style aussie yen continues to move lower so what we'll be doing here is waiting for this pullback waiting for price to rally a little bit and uh, come back up to better entry zones. Maybe it comes back up to this 80 nice psychological support turn resistance level here. Look for shorting opportunities and catch, catch that wave to the downside. Try to catch that next move lower. Swiss franc, Japanese yen, trading up above this strong resistance now in this tight consolidation range up here, right? So we have this um, rectangle, flag pattern, whatever you want to call it, that we have trading up above this resistance area. Um, now turn support. So what we could do here is wait for buying opportunities down here, or we could take breakout buy stop opportunities up above the highs here. But all in all, this pair does look nice for longs. We do want to be looking to catch this next move to the upside um, and see if price is able to uh, break these resistance levels here this week. Or maybe we get a deeper pullback and we look for buying opportunities down around here somewhere. We still are very far from the moving averages. We still have you know, some room for a pullback if this daily chart pulled back a little bit more, but um, this could be a good opportunity to get long, depending on what your strategy is. Pound Aussie continued to rip higher this week. Um, as you can see, we pushed up into this resistance level and started to see a little bit of a sell-off off of that. Um, once price hit this, you see the buyers push back a little bit. So we'll be looking for a pullback in this pair as well. Ideal area would be right down to this seventy. I mean, this dollar uh, eighty level here, and look for a you know this area on this red line of daily support and resistance to hold price here and then look for long opportunities to catch that next push higher but another one where we want to sit back and wait for price to come to us pound new zealand similar story broke this trend line broke this resistance continue to push higher hit this resistance now so we want to see if price is able to pull back into this dollar 96 level here and then look for longs to try to catch that next push to the upside pound canadian dollar um, so this one was a great trade that we had also in the signal group here at CoreFX. So we came down double bottomed off this strong support, very similar to like I was saying in New Zealand yen, look for a setup like this. Maybe this double bottom bounces off here. As you guys can see, we were divergent here as well. You can see the higher lows on the bottoms here, and these are even or a little bit lower even on this wick. So we have divergence lining up with a double bottom bullish engulfing, broke this resistance, pulled back, acted as support, caught that long, beautiful long, ran right up to our targets. But now what we are seeing is a different story, right? Now we are seeing a flip. We are seeing now price made this double bottom in a strong downtrend. We had this pullback, which turned into a nice little bullish trend on the lower time frames, right? So it turned into a bull trend here, bull trend here. So that's where we caught our nice long opportunities on the smaller time frame trend reversal. But this trend reversal in this bigger picture is simply a pullback on the daily chart, right? So this is a pullback on the daily chart. We've now had three rejection wicks to the 50 SMA, to this trend line, and to this strong support turn resistance zone, right? So now what we do is we want to look for this overall larger time frame trend to now continue. And now maybe we could be looking for short opportunities on this pair as we come down off this resistance, right? So 
Now we're going to be watching for this resistance to hold and for this downtrend to continue from the daily point of view now, this higher time frame trend that we now look like we could be ready to move. We can throw some Fibonacci levels out here too to see if we line up one from this major move down. As you can see, this is right on the 382 where we're rejecting. And then you can even go and take it a little bit more um, of the prior move and try to check it out from here. The start of this last push. So we had this strong push, but then we pulled back a little. Then we had this strong push and we're at the 50 to 618 level here. So um, both ways of applying the Fibonacci to this prior move, you can see we're at strong levels. We got lots of confirmation, candlestick patterns, SMA rejection, support turn resistance, trend lines. Uh, we got a lot of things lining up here to show us that this pair might be ready to go back to rolling over now. And uh, pound CAD could be some nice shorts this week. Euro New Zealand, another one where price has been moving higher nicely and we want to wait for it to pull back, come to us, get in at better discounted prices and look for a long opportunity there. So this will be on my watch list as well for something to pull back and come back to um, really show us a better level to enter. And then you've also got your Euro Aussie, similar setup. We're coming up to a strong daily trend line that was broken. We could hit this as resistance. That could be our trigger to pull back. Then we look for long opportunities down here after we get a pullback and try to catch that next push higher. But all in all, still bull market, still bull um, opportunities looking for long. So you're just waiting for the right position to get in. Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, another great trade we took this week in the room. As you guys can see, beautiful setup, lower low, pullbacks to the lower high, strong bearish engulfing, strong rejection of this zone of the um, trend line. And we entered here on this break and really just rode it all the way down. Um, we had news here before these prior moves. So some people might have gotten out before this strong push to the downside. But if you rode out the wave, um, the price did end up hitting the full take profit. That was another beautiful trade we took here. And now we are approaching this strong support again. So what we'll be doing with this pair is watching to see what price does now. See if we can break through that and wait for a pullback to there to short, or maybe we get a pullback now and we look to short it on the next one. But either way, we're setting lower lows in a downtrend, continue to push lower. So we do want to um, really look for shorting opportunities. This would be one where um, if we have a weak CAD this week, we wouldn't want to be shorting it. If we get a weak CAD this week, maybe we get a little bit of a bounce in the Aussie and that's the pullback we get here. But um, all in all, again, with this pair, um, this was more so just showing a trade we took last week, but we also want to be watching for any pullback type setups for this trade here. And Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. So we continue to sell off here, um, looking for a little bit of a rally. Maybe that Canadian dollar starts the week off a little bit strong, gets up into this zone, and we look for short opportunities to catch that next push lower, catch that CAD weakness maybe second half of the week, and try to catch this short to the downside. So this is a pair I will certainly be watching for shorts. We've got room down to about here. So if, if we get in short here, we can have our first targets in here, second targets down here. If we trade a break of this after this pullback, a break of this support, then we have all this box for potential profits. So we have room to move with this pair to the downside. We just want to get a pullback. You can see a very strong bearish move to the downside. So we do want to see this pullback a little bit. We don't want to try chasing this falling price, wait for it to come back to us and then look to short it from there. All right. So that covers all the pairs I'm watching this week, guys. All the US dollar crosses as well as my watch list. A little bit of the other indexes as well. Um, I really hope you guys have a great trading week coming ahead. I appreciate taking the time to watch these videos. I hope you get something out of them. And um, enjoy the trading week, guys. Good luck with all your trades, and I'll catch you in the next.